Hey everybody, welcome to episode 3 of What Not to Mess with Chris. My goal this week is to put out quick, relevant content that explains the why behind the what in order to positively impact the freight community. Last episode, I compared the outbound tender rejection index to Internet Truck Stop's 7-day van rate per mile index um, and mentioned that um, imports into the U.S. showed no signs of slowing into the near future. On today's episode, I'm going to elaborate on that comment by explaining what's going on currently with imports, why import maritime data is so important, and how it significantly impacts the, uh, the truckload sector. Behind me is a year-to-date view of imports that have been cleared by U.S. Customs. The green line here represents 2019 data, and the blue line represents uh, current data for 2020. Um, starting with what's going on currently, we are seeing imports that have cleared U.S. Customs, so this chart behind me, um, up 22% year-over-year. So from here to here, 22% growth. Bookings of U.S. imports from China are up 89% year-over-year throughout the next seven days. And container rates from China to the West Coast and East Coast are both sitting at all-time highs. Gene Soroka, who is the director at the Port of LA, executive director at Port of LA, um, which is one of the busiest ports in the country, uh, recently stated that last month the Port of LA experienced their busiest month in history, in their 100 plus year history. So the big question is why? Why is this happening now? First of all, back in mid March, uh, when imports had, that had cleared customs were sitting at levels of 50% of what they're at now. Uh, due to COVID concerns, ocean carriers began to blank or essentially ca- cancel uh, sailings. They were removing large amounts of uh, capacity from the market in order to uh, keep rates from bottoming out. Uh, for example, just between February and March, the Port of LA reported a decrease of a half a million TEUs contributed to blank sailings. The problem is, um, By the end of April, beginning of May, imports had basically returned to to pre-pandemic levels um, from a spike in e-commerce due to more people working from home and needing to furnish home offices to a large number of individuals moving out of the cities um, and needing to buy bulkier items to furnish those homes or to buy stuff for homes um, like appliances because they were moving into the suburbs um, and doing home improvement projects as well uh, to an enormous and immediate need for PPE. With all of the unanticipated demand that was taking place, ocean carriers quickly found themselves not being able to keep up with that demand um, and began bringing capacity back into the market. Um, And even today, as capacity levels um, have exceeded where they were pre-COVID on the container side, um, ocean carriers are still struggling to keep up with the heavy demand that's being reflected in today's container rates. All this is important and relevant Uh, when discussing truckload volumes because roughly 70% of truckload freight, one way or the other, originates from imports. So by being able to properly forecast import volumes, we can gain a better understanding of how to predict truckload demand. And as imports and bookings uh, remain elevated, we should continue to see higher tender rejections and volumes uh, for the next several weeks and potentially into the holiday season. If you have any questions, or would like to reach out to me or have a more in-depth conversation, please do so and feel free to. Um, And again, my name is Chris Seeds, and this has been What Not to Miss with Chris.